Hey horror fans, thanks for joining me for this review of The Babysitter, Killer Queen. Alright, uh, cast and crew information down below. And uh, let's see what the IMDb plot says here. Uh, two years after Cole survived a satanic blood cult, he is living another nightmare. High school. And the demons from his past? Still making his life hell. Alright. So, um, I guess let's start off here. This is a sequel, obviously, um, on Netflix. I, I think it's exclusively Netflix. And um, I did a review for this a couple of months ago, maybe several months ago. And uh, it ended up being on one of these movies where I was just kind of searching through Netflix and just was like, I saw, I kind of read what it was about, and was like, okay, a babysitter movie it could be fun. Um, and I kind of clicked in and watched it, and uh, surprisingly liked it. There was a lot of a lot of good things about it. It was funny. Um, you know, you got a good young kid here. Um, a funny cast around him as far as the bad bad guys in the movie, and um, I think it all worked out well. Um, did I see a need for a sequel? No. Um, they definitely, I think, left the door open for one, so am I totally shocked? No. Um, and now there's even talk that maybe there will be a third, so you know, we'll see. Um, but uh, let's start talking just a little bit about the, the original here. Basically, you have Cole here. He's the young boy. And... Um, he is, is kind of coming of age in this movie, and um, he, he's got a good-looking uh, babysitter there, and um, he, you know, he's, you know, of that age where you know he's starting to kind of crush on her. It's not just a babysitter anymore, uh, but unfortunately for him, this is also the time where she decides um, it's time to bring in her cult members here, and. Um, they basically want to have his blood uh, for some kind of you know, ritual or one of those kind of things that you know, cults do. And um, yeah, so it becomes an exciting night of them chasing him around and um, trying to get his blood. Um, get introduced to a cast of characters there and um, he somehow manages to survive the night, um, and that is why we have a sequel, so I don't think I was really spoiling too much there in of part one. Um, I won't you know, go into any details of how it happens, but he survives. Um, and like I said, they do leave the door open a little bit there for a sequel, and we have a sequel. Um, so let, let's talk about the sequel then. Um, it is two years later, and uh, I guess one of the good things here is you have a lot of the cast returning. Uh, there's good and bad, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but, you know, it is Cole a little bit older now. And um, he's in high school, and he's kind of struggling. Um, he's convinced the events of that night really happened, where most of the people around him think he's nuts. Um, they don't really believe that because of all the wild and crazy things that happened that those things could have happened. Um, so he's really struggling with it. And um, his friend Phoebe decides um, to, you know, let's whisk him away for, for the weekend. They, they go to, to um, some, like, boat boating event thing um, out in the middle of nowhere um, without really parents of permission or anything like that um, trying to just just get him away get his mind off things um, and to to help him out um, and and kind of get away from the high school thing get away from you know the place where, where all these things happened and um, maybe, you know, take a step forward. And um, here again, he's kind of caught in the middle. Cause, um, he's not really sure where he stands with Phoebe. He kind of likes her, but he's not really sure that she likes him. He, she kind of has another boyfriend. And, um, you know, there's all this constant flirting back and forth. So 
um, he's easily suckered into going there. And um, basically, the thing with the with the second movie is is that um, the babysitter from the first movie, um, B, is is not in it. Um, she she's was a, such a presence there in the first movie. And um, if you saw the first movie, you saw what happens there. Um, but she's not, and she's basically replaced in this second movie. And um, while the replacement does a, a, a good job, uh, it's not quite the same. Um, and maybe because, you know, in a way he's babysat in this movie as well, but not in the same way. Um, you know, you call it the babysitter, and that's really where the first one was. Um, but in the second one, you know, it's not really babysitting here because, you know, really they're not in the house anymore. They're away. He's older now, and he's more with friends. Um, so if you want to say his friends are babysitting him, I mean, I'll give you that. Um, he meets a, another new girl here um, besides Phoebe um, and kind of befriends her. So if you want to say that, Maybe they're be babysitting each other. Um, you know, that might be a stretch. Um, but definitely, uh, B not being in the movie is, is a change and a big one. Um, she's such a presence there in the first one. Um, again, the, the girl who replaces her doesn't do a bad job, but I guess it's, it's um, big shoes to fill there. Um, the... Good thing is that there are, are other characters. If you saw the first one, most of the cult members that are killed off um, come back. And uh, no worries, that's explained. They, they go through the thing and tell you why that, that happens. Because um, that was one of the things that was kind of a little bit unexplained in the first one. And the first one I'm watching, and I'm like, are these just cult members? Are they vampires? I thought, you know, like, what is exactly happening with them? Because they... they seemed like they might have had some special powers going on here, but I really wasn't sure, and they never make it really clear. Um, so in the second one, it kind of clears up a little bit um, for you. They, they kind of give you a little bit more of what's going on with this cult and how these people got that way. Um, and then how even the person running the show this time got that way. Um, so the, in that aspect, it, it's good. It kind of clears things up. Um, so yeah, once they get out here on this boat island, you know, area by these rocks, I don't know, it's just a, you know, weird setting. Um, that's one of the things I didn't like about this movie. Um, you know, I, I see them, you know, wanting to change it up and do something different in a different area, and maybe if they would have done it in the house again, um, there's challenges of, of coming up with new stuff, and um, maybe challenges of boring the, boring the audience by doing that again. Um, but I, I didn't like this setting, um, you know, it just was too dull and very dark and, I don't know, it just didn't seem to, to fit the bill. Um, it did decently in the final scene as, as setting that up, but, um, I don't know, I, 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 it didn't do anything for me, the setting of this movie. Um, but again, you, you do have some of the characters come back. And um, you see them um, kind of continue, and there there's some unique characters here. And these are the cult members that I'm talking about, and um, a lot of them go through the, some of the same antics and maybe try to top themselves, and and um, you know they have a fun time with it. Again, a couple of them die, are going to die off, and um, in a fun way. Um, there's one that kind of gets. I'm not going to tell who is who, but I guess one gets caught in between some rocks, and that's kind of fun death. Um, I'm pretty sure it was CGI, uh, a lot, some of the deaths in here, which is always a little disappointing, but, um, you know, whatever. Um, but if you, if you enjoy those characters, I, I, there's things to enjoy about those characters, and I think that that's one of the main reasons why this continued. I think if, if they brought it back in... in maybe created some new characters, maybe it wouldn't have the same feel to it. Um, it just seemed right to have them come back, even though they supposedly died in the first one. Um, but, you know, when it comes to that part, when it kind of gets through some of the explaining and gets the setting and so forth, and kind of gets back to um, them trying to catch 
Cole again because they want his blood. Uh, you know, it starts to pick up. It's a little bit fun. You get some death. Um, but I guess I guess it's just not the same. I guess because you've kind of seen it before, it's not the total brand new feeling. Um, so maybe it's not as exciting. Um, and then there's the ending, which I, I don't want to give away. It was it was a good ending. Uh, I, I you know they have some surprises for you. Again, I, I think they. I would say this one is probably left where if they never made a third one, you'd probably say, okay, you know, but, you know, just like they did with the first one, you know, there is still that room there. Um, and we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I, there, there's some twists and turns there at the end, and I'm not going to give away anything. I don't want to give away anything. Um, this movie is just out now, and then... I know some people haven't seen it, so I, I'm not going to give away. I've been hiding a lot here al along the way. Um, I think another, another thing they did in the first one a lot is, is not be afraid to... Um, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's a better technical term for it. Right? It's not coming to my mind now, but basically when they when I throw captions on the, on the screen there to kind of describe something going on and, or just add a little funny humor to it, um, they did that a little bit in this movie, but maybe not as much as the first movie. And and um, I actually liked that and thought that was like an, uh, a nice added entertainment value there in, in the first one. Um, but I, I didn't think they did enough of it in the, in the second time around. Maybe they just wanted to fade that out. I don't know. Um, so I guess at the end of the day, there's not much more to say without spoiling things. Um... I don't remember if I gave the first one 3.5 or 3 pools of blood. Um, I, I think I'm going to give this one 3 pools of blood. Um, if I happen to manage to give the first one 3 pools of blood, then I've probably screwed that up. But um, I'll just make it very clear, regardless of, of the rating, I, I liked the first one better. Um, just because it was you know fresh and original and whatever. And... Um, Doing it a second time around, it, well, there's a lot of good things there. Um, not being f totally fresh and whatever kind of takes a little bit out of it. And again, um, I didn't care for the setting. And again, um, I thought B, who was just played by uh, Samara Weaving, um, she, you know, she, she's very good. And um, I thought not having her there kind of hurt a little bit. And then, again, no discredit to their, her, you know, basically her stand-in here. Um, you know, she does a good job in this movie, but it, it's just not uh, not the same. You know, you, you, you want Samara back, you know, you want her there um, in that role. Um, so it's just not the same. So regardless of whatever, I think I make it clear that, that I think the first one was... was better than this one um but together i think they're both two good watches if you haven't seen either of them i would say you know make some time watch them back to back that'll probably be a fun thing to do um and you can get the full experience there um probably if i would have known that this was a, the first one was going to end up with a sequel i probably would have waited and watched them back to back um but i i definitely definitely recommend it um, it's definitely horror comedy. There is blood and guts, um, and the, there is plenty of comedy to go around. It's not a serious um, slasher type movie or anything like that, and it's not, you know, like a serious home invasion. Even though the first one is, you know, if you want to call it home invasion, you, I guess you kind of, even though they have permission, sort of in a way. Um, but uh, anyway, that that's enough, I guess, of rambling here. I don't need to babysit this movie anymore. So uh, yeah, three pools of blood for this one. And um, as usual, you can catch more reviews at horrorscorereviews.blogspot.com. That is down below, along with uh, Twitter and Facebook information where you can find me. Um, if you want to talk about this movie, other movies, uh, if you have something you want me to review, um, you can find me there. We can talk about that as well. Um, comment section down below you can comment on this video or if you want to talk about something else there as well easy to find me um, there I check for comments as much as I can and um, 
yeah, I guess that's it for the Killer Queen, and um, we'll move on to the next review, so I'll catch you later, horror fans.